Hi guys, Victoria here. After last week's vlog from Corfu, this week I am bringing you a vlog from Paris. I was in Paris in the beginning of August during the Olympic Games and I have visited a lot of sites and some of the Olympic venues. So join me as I discover the city of Paris. On the first morning I was heading into the heart of the city as I was meeting a friend for brunch at La Petite Quotidienne which is a chain that I know from when I lived in Buenos Aires and I haven't been to one since 2018 so I was curious to visit one of the locations in Paris after the brunch with my friend I headed on, on my discovery of the city, I was going around the city by myself, visiting locations and sites. My first destination was actually the Place de Hôtel de Ville. I'm very sorry, I don't speak any French, so if my pronunciation is bad, I apologize to everyone who is sensitive to that. The Hôtel de Ville is the city hall of Paris and during the Olympic Games the square in front of the city hall served as a fan zone where visitors could watch the Olympic events on big screens, try different Olympic and Paralympic disciplines and they had also concerts and other activities on this square. On top of that the men's and the women's marathons actually started here from in front of Hotel de Ville. This location has housed the Paris City Hall since 1357 and the current building was erected in neo-renaissance style after 1871 when the former City Hall has burned down. The square in front of the City Hall has come to be known as the Place de Hotel de Ville and has become a hotspot for exhibitions and other cultural attractions. Following my impromptu visit at the site of the fan zone, I headed on to go to visit the Sacre Coeur, or at least look at it from the outside, because I actually have been to Paris before in 2003 as a kid, and I visited most of the major sites, the Notre Dame, I've been to the Eiffel Tower, I've been on top of the Eiffel Tower, I went to Disneyland, I went inside the Louvre, but I have not been to the Sacre Coeur, so this time I made it number one priority to visit the Sacre Coeur Basilica, which is a Catholic church and the minor basilica in Paris dedicated to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Sacre Coeur is located at the summit of the Butte of Montmartre. From its dome 200 meters above the Seine, the basilica overlooks the entire city of Paris and its suburbs. It is the second most popular destination in the capital after the Eiffel Tower. The basilica was first proposed by Félix Fournier, the Bishop of Nantes, in 1870 after the defeat of France and the capture of Napoleon III at the Battle of Sedan in the Franco-Prussian War. He attributed the defeat of France to the moral decline of the country since the French Revolution and proposed a new Parisian church dedicated to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. The basilica was designed by Paul Abadi, whose neo-Byzantine Romanesque plan was selected from among 77 proposals. Construction began in 1875 and continued for 40 years under five different architects. Montmartre was selected as the site of the new basilica due to its prominent height and visibility from many parts of Paris. Apart from its physical attributes, Montmartre, or the Hill of the Martyrs, was also chosen for its association with the early Christian church. According to tradition, it was the place where the patron saint of Paris, Saint Denis of Paris, was beheaded by the Romans. Allegedly, after after the opening ceremonies of the 2024 Olympics, the church was the only place with electricity during the alleged 2024 Paris blackout. Following
during my visit to the Sacre Coeur, I started my hunt to visit all the sites which had an Olympic or Paralympic logo on them. So the Arc de Triomphe, as you can see, has the Paralympic Agitos on top of it. And the Eiffel Tower had, of course, the Olympic rings. And this was <laughs> probably the most difficult to find the perfect angle to take shots of the Eiffel Tower with the Olympic rings because the Olympic rings were only on one side of it and when I was heading there I didn't know on which side it is I thought it was gonna be on the side of the beach volleyball venue which is actually exactly on the opposite side so I went and walked all the way around the beach volleyball venue to see all the sides <laughs> of the Eiffel Tower just to realize that I should have just started my journey in the opposite direction to find the Olympic rings because it was facing the Seine which I wasn't aware of and it was also facing the Champions Park which each evening hosted events for the public for free where you could enter and you could meet some of the Olympic medalists So when I was there, we got to see, for example, the French swimming team, or at least those who have won medals during the Olympics. Since by the time I was there, the swimming competitions have ended. So the French swimming team came without their shirts on, well, at least the guys. I figured that was for the reason so that we can recognize them, because maybe fully clothed we wouldn't. But anyway, there was an other uh, champion from the event. Well, actually, he was placed second at the hammer throw competition, who is from Hungary. His name is Bence Hajos, and he's actually training in my hometown. I know very well the venue where he's training, and I also know the coaches that he's training with from my childhood. I used to train at the same venue when I was training athletics. I wasn't doing hammer throwing. And it is actually a world famous coaching team for hammer throwing. The 2012 Olympic champion was also from this team. And then basically there was just a party with all the champions at this square or at the park. I actually saw Michael Phelps there. He was one of the hosts on this day. And every day they had different Olympic champions and Olympic medalists appearing and you could enter for free. Of course, you had to queue quite a bit and wait to be let in and you weren't you could not be guaranteed a spot inside, but I was lucky and I was there with some friends and we were lucky to all have a seat. So we had a good evening. We ended our evening at the park next to Louvre, close to the park of the Tuileries. As you can see, there were many, many people. And the reason for this is because the Olympic flame was actually lit and was placed in the Tuileries Park and every evening upon sunset, once the sun has set, they let the balloon, which was attached to the cauldron of the Olympic flame, they let it go up in the air for, I don't know, for how long actually, for maybe an hour or half an hour. And so everyone was waiting for this moment where they were raising up the balloon with the Olympic cauldron and the Olympic flame. So we went to check that out and this is how we ended our first night in Paris. me win
The next day, after brunch at the Bohemia Cafe, which is close to the Louvre Museum, I continued my hunt for the Olympic rings and I knew there was one displayed in the Louvre next to the glass pyramid of the main entrance, so I was headed there. And of course that meant that I visited the Louvre but only from the outside. I have already been to the museum before in 2003, so this time I opted out from going in. Just a little bit about the museum. Of course, everyone knows the Louvre. It is the National Art Museum in Paris and it's one of the most famous museums in the world, if not the most famous. The museum is home to some of the most canonical works of Western art, including the Mona Lisa, the Venus de Milo and Wing to Victory. It is housed in the Palace of Louvre, which was originally built in the late 12th to 13th century and it served as a fortress until, due to urban expansion, the fortress lost its defensive function and King Francis I converted it into the primary residence of the French kings and later on when the French kings decided to rehouse their residence to the Palace of Versailles, the Louvre was primarily left as a place to display the royal collection and during the French Revolution the National Assembly decreed that the Louvre should be used as a museum to display the nation's masterpieces. Since I visited the Louvre Museum before, I wanted to visit different museums this time around and I was recommended two museums, the Museum d'Orsay and the Musée de l'Orangerie. And so I went to the Orangerie on this day and then the next day in the evening, because it was a Thursday, I wanted to go to the Museo d'Orsay because in the evenings on Thursdays it is open. However, this time during the Olympics or because of the Olympics, they were not open on Thursday evening. So unfortunately I was unable to go to Museu d'Orsay, which means that I will have to go back to Paris because of that and for other reasons too. But let's talk about this museum, the Orangery, which is an art gallery of impressionist and post-impressionist paintings located in the west corner of the Tuileries Garden. The museum is most famous as the permanent home of eight large water lilies murals by Claude Monet. And it also contains works from Cezanne, Matisse, Modigliani, Picasso, Renoir and others. Napoleon III had the orangery built in 1852 to store the citrus trees of the Tuileries Gardens from the cold in the winter. After the First World War, the state gave the building to the Under Secretariat of State for Fine Arts. And the goal for these two buildings was to provide a space for living artists to display their works. At that time, Monet was painting a series of water lilies for the state that were destined for another museum, the Rodin. But then the president of the council wanted the paintings placed in the Orangerie instead. And Monet helped the architect with the architectural design in which eight panels, each two meters high and spanning 91 meters in length in total, are arranged in two oval rooms which form the infinity symbol. Monet also requested skylights for observing these paintings in natural light. Monet's water lilies is actually a series of approximately 250 oil paintings around the same theme from his flower garden in his home in Giverny, which was his main focus of his artistic production for the last 30 years of his life and his water lily paintings are scattered around the world. There is one in the Albertina in Vienna, there is another one in New York and many other ones in different museums around the world.
Later on this day, I went to the Korean Cultural Center because I found the Reels video in which a woman showed that in this Korean Cultural Center you can do a color analysis and they will give you a list of the matching foundations for your skin and also a lip color ideas which would suit best your skin type. So I did the test which was done with the help of an AI and it recommended me the best matching Korean cosmetics. And Korea is very famous for its skincare and cosmetics. It took me a bit of time to find where exactly within the Korean Cultural Center this skincare corner was. It was just a small area and they had all the foundations from this brand on display so that you can try them but they unfortunately didn't have the lipsticks i would have loved to try some of the lipsticks that they offered but it's not very easy to get your hands on these in europe you can order them only online which that kind of defeats the purpose because i would have loved to try it before <laughs> The next day I had the privilege to visit the Olympic Village. So in the morning I didn't actually do much, I think I just went for breakfast and then after lunchtime I went to the village. So the next couple of minutes will be just a compilation of my impressions from the Olympic Village while I was visiting. Fresh train.
after my visit to the Olympic Village, which took some time because I was hanging out with people and also in the beginning I didn't find the right entrance, so it took me some time to even get to the village and queue and get a guest pass and so on. But in the evening I had the plan to go to the Museum d'Orsay, which wasn't open unfortunately after 6 p.m. And at the entrance of the museum and I met some people who also wanted to go but couldn't because it was closed and I ended up actually spending part of my evening with them just hanging out in the area and then in the evening later in the evening I went for dinner with some Hungarian friends to the restaurant called Obermama which is an Italian restaurant and it was really nice great atmosphere great food I do recommend it even though it's not a French restaurant but an Italian restaurant in France 10 out of 10 and then the next day was my last day. I was leaving Paris in the evening, flying back to Vienna. But before that, I was on a mission to go to an official store of the games to buy some merch. There were some cute cups and mugs on the website and also they had some silk pajamas on the website and some other things that I was interested in. But I queued for a long time. As you could see, there was a long queue to go to the big store that they had and neither in the village, neither in this big official merch store, I, saw, I didn't see any mugs any pajamas, they mostly had just t-shirts, jumpers, some toys and, and the mascot. So it was very disappointing to be honest, but I still did still spend some money. And then after that I just had brunch, I had some food before leaving to the airport, caught up with a colleague and I went to the airport and flew back to Vienna. So this was my trip to Paris. I hope that you enjoyed this little compilation of my four days in the city of Paris during the Olympic Games. I hope you liked this video and if you did hit the like button and consider to subscribe if you like travel vlogs because I have many of those on my channel. I'm gonna link them in the description box down below.